So now that you've got the body shells off of your dog, we can go ahead and start working on the head. I've actually found it's a bit easier to take the head apart from the top down part way before removing the head and neck from the dog's body. It's just nice having the head propped up against something. It makes taking the screws and boards out a lot easier. Um, at this moment, please take a second to ground your body with an anti-static strap because from now on we're going to be working with some pretty sensitive electronics and IBOs are very sensitive to ESD. Uh, since we're going pretty deep into the head, the first step is going to be to remove the ear hubs. Um, I already took the other one off, I forgot to record that, but the process is identical for both of them. Now the way you do that is you want to take a thin spudger and you push in against this inner gray plastic, the one that bumps up against the silver plastic, taking care not to push on the silver plastic itself. And while you're prying on that, just kind of gently pull outward on the back of the ear hub, and that part will unclip. Then you can go ahead and disconnect the front part of it in the same manner. One thing I forgot to mention is that for simpler jobs where you're not going as deep into the head, you don't actually need to remove the ear hubs. You do have to take them off for this job or if you're servicing the microphones, but if you're just going in for something else, it may not be necessary. Anyways, once those are off, you can go ahead and remove these two screws on the roof of Ivo's mouth. And once those two screws are out, you can go ahead and gently pull the lower part of the head plastics up and around the camera then extend the jaw a bit further and pull those all the way down and then I like to kind of spin it around towards Ibo's back so that's out of the way for the next part. Next up you'll go ahead and remove these two outer screws. You can ignore the middle ones as those are for the camera. And once those first front two are removed you can go ahead and remove these two rear screws. This is another situation where that stick with a magnet on it is very useful to keep them from dropping further into the head. And once those screws are out, you can gently lift upward on the visor. And then you'll want to very carefully remove these, uh, or disconnect these flexible ribbons going onto the uh, LEDs up top and to the head sensor. Now the key with these is to be gentle and go slow. You definitely don't want to force anything. They can rip. That's not super uncommon, but it shouldn't happen if you're careful. And there we go. And at this point you can go ahead and just slide these silver trim pieces off of the ears, or well, the microphones rather. And then you'll want to remove these two screws in here to free up this gray plastic, and you'll also have to disconnect this wire and loop it through that hole since that's where it's routed. Now before you can actually remove that gray plastic, I forgot to mention, you'll also have to disconnect both of the microphones and unscrew and remove them from the head. And the microphones are very easy. Once you disconnect the wiring and remove the screw, you just literally lift upward on the microphone and pull it off. Alright, with that gray plastic and the microphones out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start the process of removing the headboard and the metal bracket that it's secured to. Now to do that, you're going to want to remove these two screws here and this ground cable, as well as you'll disconnect the main wiring harness going into the headboard and this small flexible ribbon cable. And once those screws towards the front have been removed, you can go ahead and turn your attention to the back of the head and remove this screw right here. And with that screw removed, you'll want to go ahead and just gently pull backwards on this plastic part. And only pull as far as you need to to reveal that last screw and remove it. You don't want to put too much pressure on it because you could risk cracking it. And with that final screw removed, the metal bracket holding everything inside the head should be loose. You can go ahead and lift that up, then push backwards on this plastic part just enough to free it and push it down and through, taking care to deroute any wires that are in the way. And there you go, you've now removed the headboard assembly. Now with that metal bracket and the headboard out of the way, you can go ahead and just pry outward on this plastic flap, and do the same thing on the other side, then just lift it up and out. And the next step is to remove this one screw down inside of the head at the front, and then move the head tilt mechanism forward, and there's two more screws at the back to remove. 
Now at this point, before we can go any deeper into the head, we have to turn our attention back to the neck, and we're going to remove these four screws, two on either side. Now with those screws out, you can go ahead and lift the upper neck cover off of the dog, and then very gently disconnect this ribbon cable right here. Now before we go any further, now's a good time to go ahead and get this lower head plastic out of the way. Now the way to do that is to kind of loop it through there, and then gently push inward on this gray plastic to get it around there, and then lift it up and off of everything else. Now with that out of the way, we can go ahead and start removing the shutter assembly, and we start by taking that one piece off, and lift the head up a bit, and just carefully pull it through. And these tabs right here you'll want to unhook. And once those tabs are free you can just gently remove the upper half of the neck shutter assembly. And then that lower portion down here we can leave that in its channel because we can just remove this entire piece as one unit. And you'll want to take care to disconnect the chest infrared distance sensor. Now that we can access all the way down to the base of the neck here, we can go ahead and separate the left and the right half of the outer cover. Now to do that, since we've already got the screws removed, we simply just have to pry upward on this little tab here. And then you can just gently pull the halves apart. And here's what the tabs on the lower part of the neck cover look like. Normally these just pop off with the top part, but occasionally you'll get one that's a bit stuck and you'll have to manually pry these tabs open. At this point we're ready to remove the remainder of the head and neck assembly from the dog's core. Um, in order to disconnect the wiring for that, I've found it's a bit easier if you take the back sensor off first. So to do that, there's two screws in the front, and then two screws in here at the back. And then once those are disconnected, you just gently lift upward and you'll disconnect these two flexible ribbon wires back here. Now with the back sensor out of the way, you can go ahead and remove this strip of tape that's covering up the connections going through the neck, and then remove that screw for the ground wire, and then remove these two screws up top, and these four screws down in the front. All right, with those screws out of the way, we can go ahead and remove these two screws here. And then there's also two underneath the dog here and here that have to be removed so we can get this metal bracket out of the way to slide the whole neck assembly off of the dog. And with those screws out, you can just kind of gently wiggle this bracket out of the dog. And with that front bracket out of the way, we now have room to lift upwards on this metal bracket for the neck. And it takes a decent amount of force, but still be gentle. Um, if the grommets are kind of stuck around the metal rods they plug into, you can use a flathead screwdriver or a spudger to just lift up on it and get it started. Um, we want to slide that forward just enough that we have access to disconnect this flexible ribbon right here, this group of wires, and then this large wiring harness right here. And before we go ahead and slide the whole neck off, I've found it helps if you go ahead and just kind of loosen where it connects around the front using a spudger or anything that fits in there. And since those are disconnected, we can now just quite literally lift it all off as one unit. And then you can just set the neck down on the table and there's one final connection to remove right there. And with that all disconnected and removed, we are ready to finally start tearing down the neck assembly and get to the pan axis potentiometer buried way inside the middle of the neck. Couldn't have put it in a worse spot. Now to start getting inside of the neck assembly, you're going to want to remove these two strips of tape, and then these five screws that hold the neck assembly, or the lower part of the neck assembly, together. Once those screws are removed, you can flip the neck assembly over, and then you want to gently pry these tabs while lifting up on the pitch axis potentiometer to remove it, being very careful of the ribbon wire underneath it and not to damage it. Um, you want to take the tape off before doing that. 
Oh, and you'll also have to deroute the wiring going through here before you can separate the two halves of the bottom of the neck. And once you're inside the lower neck, you can go ahead and just lift the actual upper neck assembly out of the uh, gear that it goes into, like so. And next you'll want to remove this screw here, as well as these two screws over here on the other side. And on this side you'll find another screw underneath, which you should also remove. And with those screws out, you can then go ahead and just gently lift the entire upper tilt axis assembly off of the neck. And then remove the motor that controls that axis too. Next up, we're going to remove the upper portion of the pan axis assembly. And I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but it is actually keyed, so you don't need to mark it or anything. There's no real way to put it back together incorrectly. Um, all you really have to do is take a spudger insert it into that little crevice right there and just gently pry it off and there we go next you'll go ahead and remove these two screws underneath the pan axis servo but before we can actually pull that servo out, we have to remove this metal cover so that there's room to get the wiring through. And all you do for that is you use something small and pointy to pry up these tabs, one there and one on the other side. And with that cover off, you'll just remove the large group of wires on top. And then you'll want to take something sharp and very, very carefully cut through this bit of felt tape here so that we have enough slack on the wires going to the servo and potentiometer that we can pull it out through the bottom of the neck. And once you've undone that bit of tape and derouted the wiring going to the servo and potentiometer for the pan axis, we are finally ready to remove that servo. And all you really do is just kind of gently pull down on it while helping feed the wires through. And I wouldn't remove it all the way, because then you'd, it's a little bit easier if you don't have to feed this connector back through that hole. This is really all you need to get to. And once you've got that server out, you're going to want to grab a sharp blade, and then very, very gently pry on the black plastic. And it's important that you pry the black plastic away from the gray. If you push in on the gray plastic, it's a very brittle, hard plastic, and it's likely to break. So you just want to insert that there, and just gently... Yeah, that's one side. And once you've got one off, you can kind of just run your fingernail around and pop the rest of them. And you may have to pry the final tab off too. They don't always come off just by running your nail around the edge of it. But anyways, once those are all popped, you can go ahead and remove that plastic cover. And then we're gonna go ahead and, actually, I need something to pry with. We're gonna very, very gently pry off the wiper assembly. from the shaft of the uh, servo's gearbox. And this one actually looks pretty nasty. You can kind of see there's a bit of just dirt and corrosion going around that carbon strip. So what we'll do is we'll take a Q-tip, and you can use isopropyl alcohol if it's 90% or higher, but ideally you'd use some sort of contact cleaner. And just spray that onto the end of the Q-tip or in a little bowl and dip it in it, then wipe around the carbon strip very thoroughly, try and get all of the dirt out of there because you really don't want to do this job twice. And then also very, very, very gently wipe off the wipers too, being extremely careful not to bend them. Alright, I'm not sure how well it'll show up on the camera, but I've gone ahead and cleaned the carbon strips and the wipers. And now for reassembly, it's basically just the inverse of disassembly. The only thing really worth noting is that to get this potentiometer back in, you may have to turn it a little bit so that the key lines up with the shaft it's plugging onto.